Hello, welcome to Nursing with Professor B. My name is Bridget. I have a master's degree in nursing education. I'm also a family nurse practitioner. In today's video, I will be talking about why does the Pearson View trick work? Before we get started, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you subscribe, and make sure you turn on that notification bell. I do have another video that walks you step by step on how to do the Pearson View trick. This is not that video, so if you wanna watch that video, make sure that you click the link above. But this video is going to talk about why does the Pearson View trick work? All right, so Nurse Jenks, which is another uh, YouTuber, has a, and also has like a blog page, has tried to gather data on how accurate the Pearson View trick is. And according to his studies, he says that the Pearson View trick is 100% if you get a good pop up, and it's about 85% accurate if you get a bad pop up. Out on another website, that a person who used to work for the NCSBN was talking about why people can still get the bad pop up and still pass. And the reason for this is because for quality control purposes, every NCLEX is scored twice once by the computer at the test center and then after the exam record has been transmitted to Pearson View. My subscriber said that found on another website that a person who worked for Pearson View was explaining why the trick worked. He said that if you pass, it puts a hold on you from re-registering and you get the good pop-up. And the good pop-up will say, it has recently been updated, but the good pop-up will say, our records indicate that you have recently scheduled this exam. Another registration cannot be made at this time. Now, there's also a part that says your order is not complete, but the top part is what you're worried about, right? That is the good pop-up. So you know how I said that everybody that gets a good pop-up passed. I've had one person tell me that they got the good pop-up and failed. So I'm not sure what happened there. I'm not sure maybe she didn't read the pop-up correctly. There's also an on hold pop-up and maybe that's what she saw and she thought it was the good pop-up. So next I'm showing you the on hold pop-up and the on hold pop-up says, the candidate currently has test results that are on hold. A new registration cannot be created at this time. So unfortunately the on hold pop-up is not accurate, okay? You can't get an accurate, so it's not good or bad. You unfortunately just have to wait it out until they're done with whatever reason your test is on hold. But going back to why this works is that if the computer determines that you fail, the block on scheduling another exam will not be there, but you may still have passed. This is because all tests are also, he says hand graded, but they're probably just reviewed again on computer by a human or who knows, maybe by a different algorithm. They, they sometimes will toss out an item or two, leading some people, though rarely, to pass after the computer determines they fail. If the computer determines you pass, they are only verifying the result. So the pass is never tossed out on hand grading the way a fail can be. And this is in alignment with what Nurse Jenks said about his statistical data being 100%. Whereas me, I've had one person say, but again, I'm starting to suspect that maybe this person did not get the good pop-up, but maybe they got the on hold pop-up and they thought it was a good pop-up. This is why you will get an occasional person who gets the bad pop-up and still passes, but you never see a person with a good pop-up who actually fails. So what does the bad pop-up look like? So when you're doing the bad pop-up, it'll you want to use ideally a gift card that doesn't have enough funds on it or an expired gift card. I'll explain why in just a second. But you're going to see a message that says, the payment was declined, reason, contact your credit card company or use a different credit card. That's the bad pop-up. However, remember 85% that this is accurate. So there's significant amount of wiggle room, right? Now, what can affect the accuracy of the bad pop-up? So some people say, well, first of all, be careful because the NC SVN does not issue refunds. So you don't want to put in a real credit card, okay? And um, to do the Pearson View trick, you want to use an empty gift card or an old credit card because some people say that putting in the wrong expiration date will work, but others say that it interferes with the Pearson View trick because the payment has to be legitimate in order for it to go to the next step. So I, when I did the Pearson View trick myself, I used a gift card and it worked for me. So I would probably recommend that just to be on the safe side because you don't want to do the trick, get the bad pop-up 
and then be crying your eyes out when in, when in reality you pass. Now, the other thing is you want to wait until you get the, the email, you've completed the NCLEX, but you still have questions. Ideally, around two hours. It, obviously, if you do it too soon, they haven't graded your test, and then you could get the bad pop-up because they just haven't gone through that second step. So wait at least two hours, wait until you get that email, you've completed the NCLEX, but you still have questions. All right, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit the like button, make sure you subscribe, make sure you turn on that notification bell. Leave a comment below about what you learned if you recently passed the NCLEX so we can congratulate you. Until next time.